Over the past month or so, one of Luminosity's very own players, Meister, has been on an expedition. In today's landscape of competitive Smash, there's no question that Japan is on top. They have the most players in the top 50, the current best player in the world, Akola, and they have the most majors out of any other country. As such, we're seeing more and more players from Europe and North America travel to Japan in order to get stronger and make a big impact in the rankings. There's even a running joke in the community about how traveling to Japan will make you a better player seemingly automatically. And so, Meister dedicated himself to an expedition to Japan, and importantly, attending as many big tournaments as he could. This expedition ranged from August 19th to September 22nd, basically about a month's worth of time. My name's Rister Mice, and in today's video, we'll be going over the entire trip, seeing each and every tournament Meister entered, how he did at each of them, and by the end, we'll witness the Japan level up in action. Without further ado, Let's begin. As Meister landed in Japan and got settled, including setting up an account on Smashmate, his first tournament was a local. Mayasuma hit number 30 in Hirakata. Start small, you know? Now, because of the nature of this video and how much information we're going to be covering, we'll have to be a bit brief with locals so that we can spend more time looking at the big major tournaments. So with that established, Meister began his trip to Japan with a bang by winning his first local on the trip. Now, granted, he was the first seed, but let me tell ya, this local was stacked. Just to even make top 8, Meister defeated Tora, the best Ike player in the world, and Alice, the second best Roy player worldwide, both into one sets. Afterward, Meister got notable win after notable win, defeating Steve Main 33 Perrin Box 2-0, top 2 Captain Falcon Main Worldwide Karage 2-1, and lastly, a top 10 player in the world, Hurt, in a 3-0 sweep. I mean, for goodness sake, Hurt took more games off of Mia in their last set than he did over Meister. Such wins to start off this trip was a very good omen for Meister and he walked away from Mayasuma hit number 30 with the metaphorical gold medal. With this warm-up finished, Meister entered into his first of the five majors he attended during this trip, Sumobato SP50. Clocking in at an a tier, this was the third largest tournament that Meister attended during this trip, coming into it as the number six seed. Though, one consequence of it being bigger is that there are less VODs of our hero. Either way, Meister started off the weekend by breezing through pools, not dropping any games and getting a notable win over Sabotin the Rob main on the way into top 96. At this point, Meister got two things. He started getting put on stream, and he started getting some really good wins. Firstly, Meister defeated Dio's Snake in a 3-1, actually dropping a game where he hadn't against Hurt. But regardless, Meister then moved on and got a good win over Japan's current best Joker main, Gorioka, in a 3-0 sweep. To be fair, Meister likely has the best and most high-level Joker practice, maybe second to MK Big Boss. With these two good wins, Meister moved into winner's quarterfinals, one set away from top 8. But it was here that Meister ran into the first big problem of his Japan trip, one that would haunt him on several occasions throughout his time here. Meister ran into Mint Min. This time, Meister went up against Dormigi, one of the top seeds of the tournament. And while this set started well, with Meister taking game one, he wouldn't take another, with Dormigi winning three games in a row to beat Meister 3-1 and cast him down into the loser's bracket. This isn't actually the first time that these two have fought, with Meister's previous trips to Japan sometimes seeing Dormigi specifically end his bracket runs. For what it's worth though, this matchup is definitely weird. General consensus being that it's even, but a volatile even. Either way, Meister was now sitting in the loser's side top 8 qualifier, needing to go up against Rocky. Rocky, a Steve Kazuya co-main, had defeated the likes of Ryuo, Robert Kakusu, and Snow to make it here. But not dismayed in the slightest, Meister defeated Rocky in a 3-0 sweep, making it into loser's side top 8 of his first major of the trip. Now that he was here though, who would he be fighting? Well, obviously, the answer is Piranha Plant. That's right, Sumobato SP50 is the same major tournament I covered in my video on low tier heroes last month. 
where Tass the Piranha Plant made top 8. If you remember from that video, Meister would end up winning this set in a 3-1 victory. Interestingly dropping a game here, but either way, moving on into losers quarterfinals. Here, Meister had to go up against Navy, and if you aren't familiar with that name, you really should fix that. He's one of the fastest rising stars in Japan, and a well-known Smashmate warrior who mains Luigi. He had made top 8 through winners before losing a close game 5 to Hurt. Now in Losers, Meister had to go up against this rising star and was able to put it down, winning the set in a somewhat dominant 3-0, moving on into top 4 of this major tournament. Once Meister made it into Losers semifinals, he was faced with a run back versus Doromigi, who had been sent to Losers by Raru. This time, Meister was able to bring the set all the way to a decisive game 5, but then… <laughs> Sadly enough, Meister would lose to Doromigi again 3-2, being eliminated from the tournament at 4th place as the number 6 seed. After being double eliminated by the eventual 2nd place finisher, Doromigi's Min Min. This was still a really great tournament for Meister though, outplacing his seed and getting several phenomenal wins on the way defeating players who had made big upsets like Rocky, Tass, and Navy. And honestly, if Meister had clutched out that game 5 against Doromigi, I think there's a pretty good chance he could have won the tournament. He had already beaten Hurt at this point, and while a hypothetical set with Raru is a bit more up in the air, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll join me in wondering about this what if. Either way, Meister's first major in this trip wrapped up and it was time to move forward to the next. Surprisingly enough, our next tournament is yet another major, Delta 8.5. Being a mere A tier, this tournament is tied for the smallest major that Meister attended during this trip. But it happened the day after Sumobato, with no time for even a local in between. Meister, coming off hot from his amazing performance at yesterday's major, was entering this tournament as the third seed. And it started off really well, with Meister sweeping his first two rounds of pools in flawless 3-0s. But for his third set, the top 96 qualifier, Meister had to go up against Yuzu's Rosalina. This matchup is infamously bad for Game & Watch, and even though Meister was able to take a game, in the end… Oh, that was scary, scary, scary. Yeah. scary. The interaction was really <sighs> weird, but… Oh god, I was just looking for the… Oh, oh, oh it takes my it. god, just calls it. Yes. Calls it. That's right. Meister lost to Yuzu 3-1, one of the biggest upsets of the entire tournament. And so, Meister was forced to start top 96 in loser's side. One consequence of this is that Meister was never put on stream again, since loser's bracket matches are rarely streamed, especially at majors. In top 96, Meister defeated two Terry mains, Miles and JY, both in game 5 sets. However, during his very next set, Meister went up against his biggest rival during this trip, Min Min. This time, it was Mao's Min Min, and shockingly, Meister lost in a close game 5, being eliminated from the tournament at 17th place as the third seed. Though, if it makes you feel any better, Mao had a massive breakout at this tournament, placing 5th as the 36th seed after upsetting Gorioka, Akakikusu, and of course, Meister himself with Mao becoming the only Min Min player not named Doromigi to top 8 a major in 2024. So far. But back to our hero, Meister. This tournament was somewhat of a disaster for him, underplacing his seed by 6 rounds. But this trip was far from over, and if our hero wanted to keep doing well, he couldn't let this underperformance keep him down. As we all know, stuff like this just happens sometimes, especially in Japan. Before his next major, Meister was able to attend a single local, Mayasuma hit number 33, in Umeda. And keeping his crown from the previous Mayasuma hit, Meister took first place at this local, once again as the first seed. This tournament didn't have the wins that the last local may have had, but it was interesting in its own right. Firstly, Meister defeated Xion 2-1. Not the ZSS main Xion, but the hero main Xion. The same Xion who beat Mia at a major after only playing the game for 6 months. So yeah, that's a pretty solid win. Meister also defeated Yonapi, the Pichu main who became famous for also defeating Mia to make top 8 at a major, one of Pichu's standout performances in 2024 Ultimate. 
In addition to defeating two players who both have Mio wins, Meister had three sets against Japan's best Diddy Kong, Ryuo, with a total of 12 games. Meister won 2-0 the first time they fought, and then when meeting again in Grand Finals, Ryuo was able to reset the bracket 3-2. And even though the reset also went to a game 5, Meister thankfully managed to clutch it out to win the tournament. With this good performance hopefully putting some pep back in his step, Meister went to his next major tournament. At the very end of August, Meister attended Japan West 24, an invitational series that included 24 of some of Japan's best players. Being an Invitational, this tournament clocked in at an A tier, and thus is tied with Delta 8.5 as the smallest major of the five Meister attended during this trip, and he was coming into it as the seventh seed, off the back of both his good Sumobato performance and his underwhelming Delta performance. Like most Invitationals, Japan West 24 had both round robin pools and a final bracket based on pools results. There were six people in each of the four pools and Meister found himself in Pool B1, and Meister had quite a good pools performance, placing second in the pool and thus making it to the final bracket on winner's side. The only set Meister lost in pools was to Raru in a 3-1. Other than that, Meister defeated each opponent, Kuroponzu's Rob 3-1, Ryuo's Diddy Kong 3-0, Roki's Isabel 3-0, and Miko's Kazuya 3-1. By the way, if you don't recognize some of these names, it's worth keeping in mind that Japan West 24, and the original Japan 24, very notably invited several rising stars and low tier heroes to spice things up a little. It's one of the things I really like about this Invitational series, that makes it stand out against things like Summit or The Throne. Either way, Meister moved into winner's quarterfinals of the final bracket, and now had to go up against Mia, the highest ranked Game & Watch in the world. This was the first time these two had ever fought, since their previous projected sets had never come to pass. Everyone watching tuned in, so excited to see the Game & Watch ditto at a high level for the first time ever. And then Mia picked Steve. Anyways, Mia defeated Meister 3-1, sending him into the loser's bracket and disappointing possibly every single person watching by not doing the ditto. Not even for a single game. Regardless, from here, Meister made top 8 by defeating Rocky 3-1, the Steve Kazia co-main whom Meister had fought earlier on in this trip, and once in top 8, Meister got two wins that were truly exceptional. Firstly, he defeated Rarikakusu, the player most known for defeating Spargo with Donkey Kong. He used his co-main, Falco, but in the end, Meister won the set 3-1. Next up in Loser's quarterfinals, Meister got one of his best wins of the entire tournament so far a 3-0 win against Snow's Mario. Snow has gotten wins on Akola, Sonics, and Hurt just this year, and has defeated Mia before, so a win over him is a big deal for Meister, especially one so dominant. Having made yet another top 4 at yet another Japanese major, Meister went up against Ashimo, who has undergone a massive level up lately. The two players went back and forth, bringing the set to a decisive game 5, and then... <laughs> Meister managed to defeat Ashimo in a game 5, one of his best wins of the entire trip so far. This allowed Meister to move into top 3 of a Japanese major for the first time in this trip, going up in losers finals against Raru's Luigi. Sadly though, this run back from pools went the exact same as it did back then, with Meister losing 3-1 to eventually place third as the seventh seed. Though to be fair, Mia and Raru had a combined total of 15 games at this tournament. So to say that Raru was warmed up against Game & Watch is an understatement. Despite the fact that this is tied for the smallest major Meister attended during this trip, this performance is his best one so far. Top 3 of a Japanese major with such good wins is a really big deal, even at an invitational like this. And after an underwhelming Delta performance, this placement was needed, reinvigorating Meister's confidence and giving him some wins that will for sure be reflected well on Lumirank.
With 3 out of 5 majors and 5 out of 11 tournaments completed, Meister was basically now halfway done with his trip to Japan, and it was now September. With just a few short weeks left in his trip, Meister had a new determination to make the absolute most of it. But the next Japanese major was on September 14th. So for now, Meister settled down to grind some Smashmate and attend plenty of locals. And those locals is where our story is headed next. Our first local is Weekly Smash Party Sumapa 153, part of the same series where Atari Kotori took home a win, which I also covered in my 3 low tier heroes video. Check it out on this channel if you're interested. Either way, Meister was coming into this tournament as the fourth seed, but shockingly, this would be the first local where Meister severely underperformed, ending up with a placement of 25th as the fourth seed and not even being put on stream once. So what happened? Well, after winning his round one, Meister lost 2-1 to Ayalin, a Sora main that's somewhat of a hidden boss in Japan. Before dropping into losers, winning one set against Chan's Fox, before getting upset again, this time by Ice Climbers legend Futari no Kiwami A in yet another 2 1. And just as a side note, Futari no Kiwami A defeated MK Big Boss in the set right after this. So, yeah. If it makes you feel any better though, MK Leo went on to win this tournament. So, go LG, I suppose. Anyways, moving on to our next local, we've got Shin Toriumon 61, another one of Japan's legendary local series. What's really notable about this tournament is that the top three was fully comprised of Mexican players. MK Leo winning, MK Big Boss getting second, and with the hero of today's story, Meister, placing third, this time as the number six seed. And yeah, if you haven't caught on yet, MK Leo and MK Big Boss were kicking around Japan at this time, mostly due to the both of them attending Fist Bump International 2024 in Taiwan. A pretty under the radar country for the Smash scene, but a good tournament nonetheless. It'll come up again later down the line, but all you really need to know is that Big Boss ended up just attending two locals, underperforming at one and outperforming at the other, and he headed home pretty quickly, while Leo stuck around for a little bit longer, attending four locals, of which he won three and placed second at the fourth, and a P tier in the form of Umabura SP11. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's shift our focus back onto Meister, shall we? Meister had two close sets, first against Iwaya, who presumably plays Samus, as well as Rinoha's Mi Brawler, but clutched it out both times before defeating Andrik 2-0. Oh, by the way, Andrik was also here because he also attended the Fist Bump International Tournament in Taiwan, but anyways. Next, Meister defeated MK Big Boss 2-0 in winner semifinals, but after losing in just as many games to MK Leo in winners finals, Meister dropped into losers and actually lost the run back against MK Big Boss. Which, don't get me wrong, that's really cool for Big Boss, but it also sadly eliminated our hero at third place. Anyways, with that local out of the way, and Mexico firmly on top of Japan on this one, let's move on. Our final local before we get into our next major is Weekly Smash Party Sumapa 154 the next entry in the Sumapa series. Meister ended up with a pretty phenomenal performance here, placing fourth as the ninth seed. Though if you remember from my three low tier heroes video, Sumapa typically does seeding heavily based on last week's placements. And since Meister underperformed at last week's Sumapa, you could argue he was underseeded. But regardless, after sweeping his first two rounds without incident, Meister defeated Ayalin 2-0, winning the run back from last week's Sumapa. And after moving into winner's quarters, Meister lost to MK Leo 2-0, dropping into losers and defeating Eligo, one of Japan's best Young Link players, 2-0 to make top 8. After this, Meister tore through losers, defeating Japan's best Joker, Gorioka, and Japan's best Wario, Huto, both in 2-1 victories. However, once he moved into losers' semifinals, Meister lost a Game 3 set to Chicken, a notable Diddy Kong main after he made a big comeback in Game 3. This eliminated Meister at 4th place, and in the end, Ken went on to win the tournament over MK Leo. Now with that stretch of locals finished, we move on to our next big tournament in this trip, Umebura SP11. 87 and has Meister in the corner now. Yo, 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 y
This tournament was, by far, the biggest tournament that Meister attended during his Japan trip. It was the most important, clocking in at a premier tier, the highest level a tournament can get to, and it had over 1,000 entrants. Now, if you've seen anything from this tournament before, you've probably seen MK Leo's run. This was Leo's last tournament in Japan, his only major here, and he got fifth with a heaping helping of Meta Knight. And if nothing else, you've probably seen this clip. But we're not here to go in depth about Leo's run. We're here to look at Meister, who was coming into this P tier as the 16th seed. And he started off this run pretty well, defeating Bizuna, Naito, and Pikachu main Kuhara, all in 3 0s. And lastly, to make it out of pools, Meister 3 0'd notable Rob main Roki Tendon Man, entering top 96 through winner's side. Once here, Meister got a 3 0 win over notable Snake main Ryope, needing only one more set win to enter top 48 from winner's side. But Meister's opponent here was Chicken the same Diddy Kong player who Meister had lost to just three days ago at Sumapa 154. And even though this set was a BO5 compared to Sumapa's BO3, the result was the same. Chicken defeated Meister in a 3-1 set, which forced Meister to start top 48 from loser's side, with a daunting run ahead. To start that loser's run off, Meister defeated Leia's Greninja in a 3-1 set. But it was here where disaster struck. Tamapi Daifuku, who had been upset and sent into losers early, and who, by the way, just defeated Yoshidora the round prior, now moved up to fight Meister. These two have a history from Meister's previous trips to Japan, mostly in favor of Tamapi Daifuku. The set went back and forth, but ultimately, Tamapi Daifuku came out on top in a game 5, moving on in bracket and eliminating Meister at 25th place as the 16th seed underplacing his seed by two rounds after losing to the worldwide rank number eight. This was a tragic moment, especially since Meister's early out meant that he only has one VOD from this entire P-tier tournament. And if there was one major he didn't want to underperform at, it was probably the premiere. But you know what they say, the biggest falls precipitate the biggest comebacks. And if this underperformance was Meister's biggest fall, then the last stretch of this trip would be his greatest comeback. Trade offer. Yo, no jump. Has to recover that way. Yep. Yep. Our next tournament is Meister's final local in Japan, Mayasuma Hit number 38 in Umeda. Meister had won both other Mayasuma hits that he attended during this trip. And at this final one, Meister would go three for three winning Mayasuma Hit 38 as the one seed yet again. But this Mayasuma Hit wasn't too stacked, with Meister's most notable win here likely being Yonapi. But regardless, he defeated Jusan, Lux, and Peachman Key to make top 8, where Meister then beat Yonapi and double eliminated a breakout Falcon main, Nakate, in both winners finals and grand finals to win the tournament. While on its own, this seems relatively standard, I think it's worth recognizing that Meister went 3 for 3 in winning Mayasuma Hit Locals during this trip, which is an impressive feat. And with that confidence boost and his final local for this trip under his belt, Meister got ready for his final tournament for this trip, Sumobato SP51. <laughs> This tournament, part of the illustrious Sumobato series, was particularly stacked, and thus achieved the title of Super Major, being ranked as an S tier tournament. This means that this was the second most important tournament Meister attended during his time here in Japan, with the order of the five majors being Umebura, Sumobato 51, Sumobato 50, and with Delta 8.5 tying with Japan West 24. Though keep in mind that Japan West 24's status as an invitational might knock it down a few points in the eyes of critics. Certainly not in the eyes of the rankings, though. Anyways, Meister was coming into the Super Major as the 16th seed, the same seeding he had at the Umabura that he underplaced. An omen? We'll have to see. Meister started off the weekend in pools, only dropping one game to Maitakun Zelda. Yeah, that Maitakun, the legendary TO of the Mayasuma series. What is it with Japanese TOs being really good at the game, seemingly as a side hustle? Anyways, Meister lastly defeated notable Zero Suit Samus main Meido to make it into top 96 on winner's side. Once here, Meister first defeated Japan's best Roy, Alice, in a 3-0 sweep, 
a very notable win that allowed Meister to move on in brackets. But Meister's next opponent was Akola, the first seed and number one ranked player in the world. And uh, yeah, that set didn't exactly go in Meister's favor, losing 3-0 and dropping into the loser's bracket before a top 12, just like he had been seeded to. If Meister had dropped out around here, he would have made his seed and had a respectable performance. But Meister wasn't looking for a respectable performance, he was looking to steal the show. So on he went, first getting another 3-0 win over Robert Kakusu's Falco to add under his belt. Before moving on and defeating Luminous, a Joker main who had been on somewhat of a breakout run. That is, before Meister shut him down 3-0. And with that, Meister had moved into the loser's side top 8 qualifier. But his opponent here would be a daunting one, Hurt. Hurt had been upset in winner's quarterfinals to Yoshidora. And even though Meister had defeated Hurt on this trip before, that was only at a local, not a super major. Not to mention, the last time Meister fought a top 10 player in Tamapi Daifuku, he lost. This set, for a major top 8 against a top 10 worldwide opponent, had everything on the line. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Ultimately, Meister 3 0 Hurt in a very dominant set, with Hurt once again not even taking a game. With this, Hurt was eliminated at 9th place, and Meister moved into top 8 as the 16th seed, already on a phenomenal run. But if Meister defeating someone he had a good set record against doesn't quite strike you as phenomenal, let's move on to our next opponent. Raru. Raru, once again a top seed that had been knocked into loser's bracket early, is someone that had Meister's number. He was 0-3 against Raru so far in this trip, and Raru has the best Game & Watch practice in the world thanks to his frequent sets against Mia. Meister winning here would be nothing short of a miracle, and yet… <laughs> In the end, Meister defeated Raru in another 3-0 sweep, moving on in bracket despite the odds. Do you now see why, when we looked at Sumobato SP50, I said that Meister could have actually won that tournament? While the set count is still in Raru's favor, Meister just proved that it was possible for him to come out on top. But if you thought he was done, think again. Meister moved into loser's quarterfinals and defeated Fui's Yoshi in yet another quick 3-0, in a matchup that many Game & Watch mains, including Mia, think is losing. As Meister moved on into loser's semifinals, he was forced to go up against Ecola, who had been sent to loser's bracket earlier by Akikikusu. And even though Meister has clearly improved, it wasn't enough to overcome the world's rank number one, with Ecola yet again winning 3-0, which ended up eliminating Meister at fourth place as the 16th seed. But this tournament was absolutely phenomenal for Meister. A top 4 finish at a super major with wins over a top 10 and top 15 player in the world, outplacing his original seed of 16 by 4 rounds. And with that high note to end it off, Meister's trip to Japan came to an end. I mean, it had to. The second Luminosity Smash Invitational was days away, and Meister needed to hop on a plane now if he was gonna make it. But at this point in the story, one question remains. How much did any of this really matter? Well, Meister went to 11 tournaments while in Japan, with 5 of them being majors or bigger. Out of these 11, Meister only underplaced his seed 3 times, with one of them being at a local which won't end up counting for the rankings, and with the other two being at Delta A.5 and Umabura SP11. However, Meister outperformed his seed more frequently than he underperformed, doing so 5 times with only 2 being at locals. That means, even if you're only looking at tournaments that count for rankings, Meister outperformed more than he underperformed, with insanely good runs at Sumobato SP50 and 51, as well as Japan West 24. He placed top 4 at a major, top 3 at a major, and top 4 at a super major. Meister won 3 locals in Japan, all 3 being a part of the Mayasuma Hit series, and lastly, 
While he was there, Meister defeated rank number 4 Hurt, rank number 11 Raru, rank number 15 Ashimo, rank number 18 Snow, and countless members of the top 50 and top 100, like Alice, Fui, Kuroponzu, Ryuo, Navy, Gorioka, Rocky, Rarikikusu, and even more wins on players inside the top 150. Additionally, outside of tournament performances, Meister grinded the heck out of Smash Mate, getting an ELO ranking of over 2,000, which is a very impressive feat with an even more impressive set record of 61 and 1, with that one loss being against his one remaining rival from this trip, a Minmin player. Though apparently Meister won the run back, so maybe he's making some progress against his mortal enemy. Okay, we get it, I hear you saying. Meister did some really cool things on this trip, but did it help him truly improve? Is the Japan level up sticking to Meister or not? Well, in case you somehow missed my video on the second Luminosity Smash Invitational, I'd say the answer to that question is an astounding yes. Spoilers for the LGSI 2 incoming by the way, so watch my video on it if you haven't already. Working off of 17 hours of jet lag, Meister placed 9th at the LGSI 2, which doesn't seem too crazy until you see the wins. This is one of those runs I didn't mention a lot during my LGSI 2 video, specifically because I knew I'd be covering it a little more here. You see, not only did Meister reverse 3-0 Ashimo, who had just won a super major the week prior, but he beat Shaddock in a game 5 set, a player who many are saying is the best in America right now. And lastly, Meister overcame one of his worst matchups and beat DeBuzz 3-1, his first win over DeBuzz in years. And even though Meister lost back-to-back -back sets in final brackets, he lost to Shuton and Spargo, who not only are both top 10 players worldwide, but ended up placing third and second respectively. Those are not bad losses whatsoever. And when it comes to the rankings, wins and losses are way more important than just raw placements. So, in the end, all of this combines towards one ultimate conclusion. Meister absolutely leveled up because of his time in Japan. And thanks to all these wins and placements that he got, there is no doubt in my mind that the end of year rankings are going to give him a big boost to reflect that level up. Meister has always been one of Ultimate's most dedicated players, but he's never won a major before, often placing second. But with this experience, with this level up, with this new level of motivation and practice, I think it will be sooner, rather than later, where we'll see Meister finally break that barrier and win his first ever major in Smash Ultimate. And when he does, you better believe that I'll be here to cover it. With that said, I've been Rister Mice, and thank you all so very much for watching.